This video deals with sensitive subjects such as death. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings and good evening. My name is Britt and this is Macabre History. Here we are not afraid to explore the dark and sometimes strange parts of history that others would like to avoid. Tonight we are going to be discussing the famous catacombs of Paris. They are a series of interconnected tunnels that live underneath the streets of Paris. They are also home to six million souls. Let's explore the famous city of the dead. The catacombs of Paris have a fascinating history, with as many twists and turns as the underground tunnels themselves. Before they were used as an ossuary to store the remains of more than six million souls, they were used as an underground mines to mine limestone. The limestone was used for building materials to build the city of Paris into the beautiful city we now know today. The mines were also used to mine gypsum that was used to create plaster of Paris. The mines are thought to have been carved out in the late 13th century or early 14th century. The mines, also known as the Quarries of Paris, are extensive. Only 1.1 miles are actually used to store human remains. We're going to go way back to the 5th century. Rome had fallen. Frankish invasions had left people vulnerable. You can run, but you can't hide. Ha ha ha. And so they moved from the left bank of the city to the right bank of the city. When people lived in left bank, the dead were buried on the outskirts of the city. Once people relocated to right bank, the center of the city was a church and a cemetery. And as the city expanded outward, the churches and their cemeteries remained in the center. As people migrated toward the right bank of Paris, large cemeteries popped up in the center. Cemeteries like Notre Dame des Bois, not to be confused with the famous Notre Dame Cathedral. Notre Dame des Bois is much older, but sadly it was demolished in the 9th century by Norman invasions. Hey, do you want to go and suck Le Dame? Le Notre Dame? Yeah. Oh, oh, bro. Oh, bro. Bro. Oh, bro. Okay, 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 guys, we're going to do it. But I swear if someone builds a parish in its place, I will be very mad. In its place, a new parish was built. This parish was called Saint Innocence. Saint Innocence had a cemetery called the Holy Innocents. From 1186 onwards, people were buried in the Holy Innocents Cemetery. It became the largest cemetery in Paris. This cemetery became fuller and fuller as the Hundred Years' War broke out between Britain and France in 1338, and the Black Death swept through Europe. And in 1347, it hit Paris, with more than 50,000 people dying from the disease. In the 18th century, there was a smallpox epidemic that took hold in Paris and created more widows, orphans, and broken hearts as the cemeteries filled up. By 1774, the Holy Innocent Cemetery was creating a lot of problems for the city of Paris. Holy Innocence backed up to a major marketplace that is still around today, Les Halles. The cemetery was surrounded by a large stone wall to separate the dead from the living. But even with this high stone wall, issues arose. The cemetery was overflowing with the dead. The streets of Leal smelled of human decomposition, and people were worried about their health. Historian Rosemary Wakeman describes the scene as follows. Buying and selling spilled into the adjoining cemetery, where illicit trade and general debauchery formed a dance macabre among the tombs. Human decomposition mixed with the blood and guts of the market, piles of rubbish to form a putrid stench, a dangerous effluence that made Le Halles an access of infection and disease. Debauchery is the best word ever. In 1763, King Louis XV issued an edict banning burials from Paris. 
He wanted cemeteries moved to the outskirts of Paris, as they had been done in the past. Cemeteries at this point were over six feet high. The outer galleries were jam-packed with bones. But just because the king issued an edict doesn't mean people were going to follow the edict. Excusez-moi. The church opposed this edict. They felt to move or disturb the graves was bad juju. It was disrespectful to the dead. And so, for a while, nothing happened. King Louis XV's son, King Louis XVI, best known for being the husband of Marie Antoinette, pushed this edict as well. And he even formed a commission to inspect the catacombs beneath Paris. It wasn't just Holy Innocence that was having issues. Cemeteries all around Paris were having similar struggles. Say gross. The inspector put in charge of the new commission was named Charles Axel Guillemot. Hey, not to worry. I've got these. Guillemot was a Swedish-born architect. The Swedish. And his first role was to inspect the catacombs to make sure they wouldn't collapse. A series of disasters pushed the commission to hurry their plans. In 1774, the outer wall of the Cemetery of the Holy Innocents was packed full of bones, and the wall gave way, spilling remains into the mines below and onto the streets. Ew. In 1779, the gases from the decomposing corpses began to seep into private residences that backed up to the cemetery. As a result, many people complained of illness. Ew. Oh, hell no. Then, in 1780, after a long period of rain, the wall collapsed again, spilling decaying corpses into private residences. A restaurateur living in Paris at the time recounts entering his cellar to find a horrifying stench. All he wanted was a glass of wine but what he found was a pile of corpses that had burst through his basement wall. Mad. In 1787, authorities finally decided to begin moving the dead into the catacombs below the city. Cemeteries all across Paris began moving their dead in the night. Remains were placed in carts and they would be covered in black cloth. At night, the people of Paris would have heard prayers being said as officials moved carts and carts of people's remains down into the catacombs. They would have smelled incense being burned and seen the flickering of candles as they carted past. Although initially the tunnels were just a disorganized mess of bones, in the 1800s that changed. That is because in the early 1800s, a new quarries inspector was hired. Enter. Etienne and Ricard du Thierry. Don't worry, Daddy's home. I'm going to fix everything. He led the commission to arrange the bones into beautiful columns. And Ricard added altars and columns made from the bones themselves. He also added plaques with sentiments on mortality. He saw an opportunity for tourism. <laughs> Cha -ching! The catacombs were opened by appointment only to the noble tourists. Noble tourists only had special access to the catacombs. They would descend the stairs by candlelight. Illuminated would be Henri Cotte's work. Today, the catacombs are open daily to tourists of all classes. Visitors enter beneath a sign that reads, Stop, this is the empire of the dead. The catacombs were used for more than just tourism as history progressed. And those who used them used them to conceal. During the riots of the French Revolution in August of 1788, the dead were collected and placed into the catacombs. In 1871, members of the Paris Commune, a radical socialist and revolutionary group, were executed in the catacombs and photographed lying in the dark chambers. In World War II, the French resistance was known to use areas of the catacombs in their efforts to rid Paris of the Nazi invaders. And the Nazis themselves also used parts of the catacombs for their own bunkers. Although historically the catacombs have been barred from the public, the public has always found ways to use them. Some individuals have even gotten lost in the underground maze.
Now let's discuss those who have been lost exploring the vast underground. One unfortunate soul who got lost in the catacombs was a 62-year-old man named Philibert Espère. Some documents state that Philibert worked for the hospital Val de Grasse. His death certificate states that he was a quarry worker. Regardless, Philibert had access to the catacomb. One evening in November of 1793, Philibert Espère descended into the catacomb via a secure access point in the courtyard of the hospital, Val de Grasse. Philibert's motives for entering the catacombs that evening are unknown, but legend says that he was searching for some chartreuse liquor that was kept in a cellar under the streets of Paris by nuns. Philibert was never seen alive again. His wife and family reported him missing, having no clue what happened to him. It wasn't until 11 years later when his body was discovered under the Boulevard Saint-Michel, a 13-minute walk from Val de Grasse Hospital when you are above ground. His candle was burned out and he was found with a bottle of alcohol. He was mere feet away from an exit. Hello! Hello! Oh, Philibert, you fool! You have become lost in these catacombs! But hey, if these are to be my last moments, at least I am good and drunk. A tomb was erected where Philibert's body was found, and he has become a sort of patron saint for the cataphiles who venture through the catacombs. The tomb reads, in memory of Philibert Espère, lost in this excavation on 3rd November, 1793, found 11 years later and buried at the same place on the 30th of April, 1804. Another legendary missing man is a man with no name. We're not even sure if he's actually missing. In the early 2000s, ABC Family had a show about haunted locations around the globe. One episode featured the catacombs. The episode was about mysterious footage found deep in the catacombs in the early 90s. The footage is of a man running through the catacombs in a panic. He is breathing heavy, taking sharp turns, and eventually ditches the camera altogether. The camera was his only light source, and he runs off into the darkness. Supposedly, the eerie footage was given to filmmaker Francis Friedland by cataphiles, who stumbled upon the footage in the early 90s. There is no proof that this person is missing, and no remains of him have been found, at least not yet. Many have dismissed this footage as a publicity stunt by ABC Family. One case that happened in 2017 definitely not a publicity stunt. In June of 2017, two teenage boys were rescued from the catacombs after spending three days lost in the darkness. The two boys were aged 16 and 17, and they spent three entire days lost within the maze of the catacombs. They were eventually found by authorities and rescue dogs. It is not known how they were tipped off that the boys would be down there, but thankfully they were found and they were treated for hypothermia. By the time the boys were found, their cell phones had likely died. They were in complete darkness. However, not all who wander the catacombs are lost. Despite laws barring the general public from accessing the restricted sections of the catacombs, many travel down there frequently, and these people are known as cataphiles. Cataphiles are a huge part of the underground culture of the catacombs. The tunnels have become a sort of refuge for explorers and artists alike. Much of the catacomb walls are covered in graffiti and artwork. In 2004, French police doing routine training missions stumbled upon a movie theater in one of the caverns of the catacombs. The theater had a 60-foot projector, electricity, a movie collection, and a bar. The movie theater was an underground movie club run by a group called UX. That is short for Urban Experiment. UX doesn't like to be referred to as cataphiles because most of their work doesn't reside in the catacombs. However, they did use the catacombs to restore a forgotten part of French history. The Pantheon clock had not struck since 1960. With the catacombs' help, they gained access to the Pantheon building where the clock is stored, and they repaired it. 
the clock chimed again, much to the surprise of Parisians. UX is a group of very creative individuals. They have also hosted galleries down in the catacombs, but their movie theater was the most widely reported on. However, not everything that goes down in the catacombs is unofficial. In 2014, Legendary Pictures gained access to the catacombs to film an American horror film called As Above, So Below. This point is a hidden chamber that might contain a critical missing piece of our history. Well, how are we supposed to get down there? The catacombs. There are 200 miles of tunnels right underneath our feet. They're holding the remains of six million corpses. Stop. This is the empire of the dead. And they should be made to crawl on their bellies into the kingdom of darkness. If you get a, an old uh, map of Paris, uh, you can sort of find your way around the catacombs using them. It's really very difficult to shoot down here. And so as we'd be running through the corridors, like at full speed sometimes, we'd just have to put a forearm up like this. We'd be watching a monitor running through these spaces and, you know, you just take the hits in your arm instead of your face. For. It was cold, it was dark, it was far away from anything, it was creepy, and for all those reasons, weirdly, it was awesome. Like really fun. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary crawling under, you know, slabs of real stone. And it's like you climb in here and you know, you know, you know it's wrong. <laughs> like you know you shouldn't be in there. Like, like you just shouldn't be messing with this. The film takes place in the catacombs and represents a gateway to hell. The film was the first to secure permission from the French government to film down in the catacombs. Several YouTubers have explored the catacombs and posted about their adventures. Two of my favorites are Exploring with Josh and Alison Teal. Alison Teal actually brings a surfboard down into the catacombs, and she surfs through parts of the catacombs. The catacombs are open daily to tourists and provide people with an interesting glimpse into the underground of Paris. Thank you so much for listening to the history of the catacombs. If you have any additional history to add, please leave it below. I really, really love learning about them. French is a language that I love, however, it is not my strong suit, so please be kind. Sleep tight. You know what you should do? You should subscribe. Oh my yes. god! Yeah, do that, do that. Sing me the same tired song. I know it's wrong, but it goes down so Snake oil salesman